What up, Internet people? Thank you for clicking on the link. This lecture is going to be really quick. I just want to focus on how foreign policy differed between President Truman and General Dwight D. Eisenhower Ike. And there he is with Richard Nixon. And the big idea you need to realize is the fundamental policy throughout the Cold War is going to be in containing communism. That's what Truman tried to do with the Marshall Plan and the Truman Doctrine and NATO. That's what George Kennan said needed to be done. But for Eisenhower and Nixon, the Republican administration elected in 1952, containment was kind of a funny thing. Because for some more hardline, more conservatives, containment seemed weak. They looked at what happened in Korea, right? We fought for three years, over 50,000 Americans die, and the result of the war was things were exactly as they were as it started in June of 1950. North Korea was communist, South Korea was not communist. So containment was achieved, but remember Truman got in himself into some criticisms amongst Republicans that he was being weak or soft on communism. He got blamed when China fell to the communist as well. So Eisenhower is going to have a policy called the New Look Policy. And this policy is different than Truman, you see him over here, in that it is more aggressive and has a different focus. This policy is based upon some fundamental goals of the administration of Dwight D. Eisenhower. And these goals are, hey, our New Look Policy will look at me now. Look at me now. Oh. I'm containing communism and that was a little weak and what we need to do is containment's kind of a little weak it's kind of hard to wrap our heads around because you know is that really a victory and there's also this concern that we need to balance our budget our military budget was going huge NSC 68 called for this massive increase and the Korean War led to a massive increase in defense spending. And so there were these different goals amongst Eisenhower's uh, administration and his, and his advisors. So he has a Secretary of State, John Foster Dulles, who's kind of an important guy. John Foster Dulles was chosen to not just contain communism, but to turn the tide of communism. He wanted to shut up the critics of people that were criticizing Truman for being weak or soft, and Eisenhower, a general, comes in, and he has a much more aggressive policy towards communism, and it's articulated in John Foster Dulles' idea of brinkmanship. And basically, brinkmanship, if you need to help remembering it for the test, it's all about keeping it gangsta. Come on, yeah. We come through and get rid of communism. And the idea of brinkmanship is this idea, you're not just going to contain communism. Dulles is a hardliner. And conservatives like him. His rhetoric is tough. He's talking about rolling back communism, liberating people who are in, for example, Eastern Europe, turning the tide against communism. He even talks about war against the Soviets. This idea of brinkmanship never backing down in a crisis, even if it means going to war. And this is way more aggressive than the idea of containment. And this principle, you have Dulles over there on the right and Eisenhower on the left, you know, Eisenhower wants to reduce military spending. Dulles wants to get some wins in the W column, get some people free from communist rule out of the Soviet sphere. And the principle of Eisenhower's administration is going to be based upon this idea of Look at me now. Look at me now. Oh, I'm getting nukes. The New Look Policy, which was really articulated by 1955, is this idea of we need to have a focus and an emphasis on nuclear weapons. And the idea behind this is you build up nuclear weapons, you build up your nuclear arsenal, because it will do a couple of things. One is it will deter the Soviets. They're going to think twice before they proceed with any kind of policies of expansion anywhere in the world because they know we got the bombs that will blow them up. 
There also is this idea of more bang for the buck. Rather than buying tanks and millions and millions of soldiers or thousands of soldiers and battleships and all this stuff, you build up a nuclear arsenal and you're able to achieve your goals much more successfully than with conventional weapons. And that's the fundamental principle of the new look policy of President Eisenhower and John Fuster Dulles and BP Richard Nixon. Now that you got that, press pause or rewind if you're confused, there's something you need to realize, though. I know this is going to be shocking. You may fall out of your chair. You may, you may even throw your computer against the wall. Eisenhower said things, his administration said things that were very, very uh, hardline, very aggressive. And there's a difference between what politicians sometimes say and the reality of their actions. The reality is Eisenhower, even though he's talking tough, brinksmanship, you know, this idea of the new look policy. The reality was... He got the chill. The chill. The chill. The chill. He was way more chill. <laughs> and the reason why he's more chill is because the stakes were so high. There was a fear, both within the U.S. and the Soviets... Uh, of a nuclear war. It was not going to be good. No one wanted World War III, especially with the kinds of weapons they had, because it could mean literally the end of the world. And Eisenhower, while his rhetoric of his Secretary of State was much more hard line, he was a moderate. Um, in fact, he is going to help negotiate the settlement with Korea um, and, and end that war, as he promised during the 1952 campaign. But he also, during those negotiations, threatened war with China to achieve that goal. So the policies of Eisenhower are, are very similar in, sometimes, in some cases to Truman, but different as well. And there's a reason why this new look policy isn't going to be necessarily effective. Let me give you one example. In 1956, in Hungary, there was an uprising, there's a revolution. The people of Hungary and Eastern Europe rebel in the streets. They are, it's a democratic movement trying to overthrow communism from the nation of Hungary. They got Stalin's head, and this man is spitting on the statue of Joseph Stalin. And the people of Hungary rose up, hoping the U.S. would come to their aid to help them liberate themselves. And Eisenhower and his administration don't. They don't want to risk a war. They don't want to risk escalating the conflict. And if you think about it, nuclear weapons, what are you going to do? Drop a bunch of nukes on Hungary to liberate them? That's not exactly good policy. So the new look policy doesn't necessarily get put into action. But what it does do, and this is important, is there is this concept during the Cold War of MAD. Mutually assured destruction. And this idea, and it's kind of a mad idea to begin with, no pun intended, is that if you build up your nuclear weapons and the other side builds up their nuclear weapons, we are going to... We are going to have a very real risk of a nuclear war. And if we launch, they launch, and that is mad, we both destroy ourselves. So you create the system in which you build up your nukes to make sure the other guy doesn't use his. And it's kind of like in the movies, you got the one dude pointing the gun and the other guy pointing the gun and they both don't shoot because they know if they do, they're both dead. This is the concept of deterrence. And one of the reasons why some historians say there never was a major direct conflict between the U.S. and the Soviets was because we knew if we attacked one another, this would be bad. And so the use of nuclear weapons, fortunately, uh, does not get put into action. But there are many moments in the Cold War where it could have Cuban Missile Crisis. We'll study later on. But that's a little bit of info about the New Look Policy. Make sure you like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, make comments, ask questions, and keep studying history. Peace!